green farming is going to transform, have great potential to transform Phoenix. Um, so it talk about, you know, uh, there's a lot of excitement in, in urban farming and also load some of the challenges. And, uh, you know, as previous presenter pointed out, you know, we, we have, you know, soil and water availability issue, you know, and the last thing probably you want is the disease issue. So um, uh, before we get started here, I want to just get, use a simple uh, diagram here to to help you understand, you know, what is the disease, what is the pathogen, and actually there's a lot of debate and discussion about, you know, uh, this precise definition of, what, you know, what is the disease. So traditionally, in a very narrow sense, you know, a plant disease, uh, you know, referred to this caused by infectious agent, you know, like viruses, viroids, bacteria, fungi, all mycetes, or parasitic plant and nematode, you know, those are the living, uh, you know, agent, uh, infectious agent, they are biotic. And at the same time, uh, you can, you know, some of this, uh, you know, uh, disorder or, or injury can also be caused by the abiotic, you know, agent, like air pollutants and uh, chemicals. If you spray herbicide, you may get the injury from that. And if your soil have a nutritional uh, deficiency, you're going to get some disorder from that. And uh, so, you know, as you can see, that's really depends on how you uh, define, you know, what is the disease. Today, my talk is going to talk, focus on the disease in a narrow sense. Are those diseases caused by the, you know, infectious agent? Um, uh, one thing I want to point out is, you know, this abiotic agent uh, will, uh, you know, may uh, predispose plant to uh, the attack by this bio agent. You know, like if if a plant is under severe stress, either heat stress or nutritional stress, they are more vulnerable to attack by this fungi, bacteria, or nematode. Um, so. Uh, so the plant pathogen is an in, uh, infectious agent that makes plants sick, right? So globally, uh, every year, uh, you know, the yield loss is about 10 to 30 percent to this, uh, you know, uh, infectious diseases. Um, you know, in this, uh, once a plant gets attacked by the pathogen, you know, the plant is not pure passive. You know, the plant actually will respond to attack by the pathogen, and actually. Uh, during that process, a lot of plant gene will be activated. So the plant will be able to, uh, you know, fend off the infection by the pathogen. And uh, so most plants are pretty resistant to uh, plant pathogen. Uh, actually, disease is uh, actually the exception, not the rule. And uh, so there's a lot of diversity on the pathogen side, pathogen population versus on plant side, genetically, you know. So there's a, a arms race uh, between the pathogen and the plant in order, you know, both in order to survive. You know, um, so uh, in terms of the size of this um, plant pathogen, you, first you have the nematodes. Those are the very large uh, multicellular animals, and actually they are the most abundant animal on the earth. They live in the soil. And some of the, this nematode, you can see it with your naked eye, but most of plant pathogenic nematode uh, is microscopic. You cannot see it with your naked eye. And then next, you have fungi and oomycetes. Those are still real um, uh, eukaryotes, uh, which means they have uh, you know, a nuclear cell membrane, their membrane. And those are much smaller compared to the nematode. And those are normally, Rank from a few micron to a uh, hundred micron, and then next is the bacteria. Those are prokaryotes. Those are single cell uh, microorganism. Are very tiny. You cannot see it with your naked eye, and uh, so they are just you know a few microns. It's very tiny. Here, the the picture on the right just show you uh, you know on the scale. Uh, uh, in terms of size differences between fungi and bacteria. 
And the, the last one is the, the viruses. You know, viruses are very tiny. They just have some genetic material coded by, you know, have a protein code. So they are, they're very tiny. They are in nanometers, even smaller than uh, microns. So, um, so uh, one of the most important concepts in order to understand, you know, how diseases occur or in terms of the, uh, you know, the management uh, from management perspective is to understand this uh, uh, disease triangle. So you have uh, plant pathogen, you have environment and you have host and you have, have three things together. And for the, on the pathogen side, you know, you have to have, the pathogen has to uh, have um, some kind of, you know, pathogenicity factor or have a weapon to be able to attack the plant. And on the host side, you have to have, you know, if a host, host has to be susceptible, you know, a lot of plants, as I mentioned before, they are resistant, you know, and, uh, and then you have environment. Actually, in, environment really in, influence the outcome, this interaction between plant and the macro. And a lot of case, you know, if you have environment, that, you know, favor the pathogen, that will keep the balance, you know, um, uh, turned into a, the, you know, a disease. So on the pathogen side, you know, what makes a very successful uh, plant pathogen? So as I mentioned, you know, the pathogen has to have some type of one weapon to be able to attack the plant. And I think in, in a microorganism world, and uh, actually the number matters than the size. And in mammal world, the size matter, but in microscopic world here, the number really matter. They will be able to, you know, in order to be a successful pathogen, you have to be able to produce a massive amount of spore to be able to spread, you know, from one plant to another. And so on the host side, you know, what makes a vulnerable host? And uh, um, so the, the host, you know, if it's under the stress and uh, then it will be, become more susceptible to attack by the pathogen. And if the host, uh, lack of certain resistant gene, you know, it will make them very vulnerable to the pathogen attack. You know, finally, you know, this tr disease triangle, you have to, uh, the human also, you know, um, uh, you can influence the outcome of that interaction. And then you can, the, the disease triangle become a disease pyramid. Actually, you know, human, um, you know, you, migrate they bring the plant along with them that that will you know introduce the pathogen and the vector and human you know have agriculture grow this plant the monoculture they're genetically uniform are very uh, you know prone to the attack by the pathogen also a lot of our growing practices you know uh, like you know planting high density the 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 um modify the macro environment that that will also really influence that uh, interaction outcome and uh, so again i want to emphasize that you know the, the environment really uh, play a, a critical role um uh, you know uh, in in, the, in that that interaction so temperature humidity and uh, you know the microbial diversity in the soil, the nutrient status, you know, the moisture, all of this, you know, influence the, you know, whether that interaction will turn into a disease or not. So that's the basic okay, about the, uh, you know, concept in plant pathology. And now I'm going to just, you know, introduce uh, some of the diseases you may uh, encounter, you know, uh, in, in, in urban farming. So disease, you know, when you talk about it, you can, you, you can group the disease based on the, you know, the, the microorganism, the causal agent. Also, you can base, group the disease based on, you know, where the symptoms are, you know. For example, you can either say the phonier diseases or soil bone diseases, and, uh, or, you know, that's where, uh, and also, you know, you can uh, group a disease based on the, what causes it. So I'm going to go with um, uh, what caused it. So the, the most common uh, plant disease is it's caused by the fungi, you know. Uh, right now, it's, we have about 100,000 species of fungi that have been described. And uh, a lot of 200,000 species, probably a lot of uh, described. So among this, about 20,000 species are plant 
pathogenic, you know, as you can see, there's a lot of a number of fungi that can cause disease. So fungi, uh, I, this picture show you, you know, how the fungi looks like, you know, they have a hyphae, you know, that's an individual strand. Uh, what you see a lot of times this mold is the uh, aggregation of this, uh, you know, uh, hyphae light work. Um, what you said, you know, either powdery mildew or gray mold. And this fungi, they will produce a massive number of spores to spread. And uh, some of the spores, you know, per produce directly on this, you know, uh, differentiated mycelium. Sometimes they need to, they produce a fruiting body like pycnidia, mushroom. Um, and the inside, they have a spore production. And they, in general, the disease because you know you have you know a leaf spot, rust, you know, mildew, including powder mildew, downy mildew. It's very common on vegetable, and uh, you have blight. And uh, a lot of times, uh, this fungal pathogen can cause wilt diseases, canker, and uh, root rot. Root rot is very important, and but it's very hard to diagnostic. Um, so here, I show you a couple of you know. Uh, uh, picture of those diseases. And uh, so as, to me, I think uh, in terms of vegetable production, you know, a problem is the damping off or seedling disease is one of the most important one. So damping off referred to, you know, a disease complex actually caused by, uh, you know, a number of pathogens. Uh, it's a disease that affects the germination, emergency, and early se seedling growth of the young plant. And because vegetable seed, a lot of times it's very tiny, and you need to, uh, you, if you plant too deep, it you know it will slow down the emergency. And if the the temperature environment is too cold, it also will slow down their growth. And uh, so, so as you can see, you know, um, it's the 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 seedling disease can be, a, you know, uh, a very important issue. So. It's, so the damping off refer to either seed rot. I show you a picture here, as you can see. Those are actually it's not vegetable. These are cotton seeds. Those seeds have very cold, poor cold germination problem. They plant early in the season, and then this uh, because their you know the vigor is is poor, so they they didn't make out of ground already rotted, you know, and then. Sometimes you, the, the seed already you know, start germinate, but the lever make out of ground. You have this so-called pre-emergency damping off. And so you, you will get a poor stand and you may not be able to um, find what caused it, you know. And probably what we will see most commonly is the supposed emergency damping off as you hear. Um, this is a very common. It, and, um, so the, in terms of the passage, you know, most uh, commonly caused by either Rex Dragonia or PCM or uh, Cephalopsis, and those are called black root rot. And uh, um, so, okay, so in terms of management, uh, really, um, um, there, you know, there's a lot of things you can do uh, uh, to really speed up the germination. You can use the quality seed. And you can, um, you know, not plant at the right time. Not, and uh, you have to know probably the weather. If you have a cold front moving through, you don't, you know, you don't plant during this period. That will slow down the germination, increase the risk of, uh, you know, uh, getting seedling diseases. So the last result is, um, you know, right now there's a, some seed treatment actually available. I have a you know, in this publication, this is for cotton diseases I, I have, um, but the chemistry is, you know, it's pretty similar. And uh, for example, uh, if you want, to, if, you know, you have, you know, sitting is caused by the uh, phytophthora or PCM, mostly PCM, you will have, you, you, you can use the metamexyl, you know. Um, so they're commercially available, you know, there's a lot of, um, you know, active ingredients available to 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 fight this uh, seedling diseases, but it, uh, in some cases, uh, you probably have to know what cause, you know, which pathogen, um, uh, you know, cause the seedling disease issue because some of this fungicide may work only against one group. 
some of this, uh, you know, seed treatment fungicide is come as a package and uh, with uh, all different kinds of ingredients that can cover pretty much all um, uh, Sydney uh, diseases. Um, so the next one, very important diseases, I think on the um, vegetable is the fat after. And not only on vegetable, also on some of the shrub ornamentals, also on some of the fruit trees, you can have fat after. So fat, fat after actually living in the soil, they are very common. Um, so some, most of species uh, cause this disease have some level of host specificity, it means you know, they only attack certain uh, group of host plant. And uh, there are a couple of uh, Phytophthora species have very broad you know, host um, spectrum. And not commonly people call Phytophthora the water mode, uh, you know, com together with PCM, they call it water mode, you know, because their life history really depends on the, the water. And uh, um, they need the water to be able to uh, move around in the soil and uh, to infect the new host. And the disease is really, as I said, you know, it's really driven by wet and poorly drained uh, gnome soil. And uh, most of plants are tolerant, but at the seedling stage, like PCM, you know, um, some of these young plants can, can be very susceptible to, uh, you know, to infection by Phytophthora or PCM. Not, a lot of times the, PCM, uh, the infected tissue will become very mushy and, uh, and on the uh, ornamental, you will see a lot of canker leg, you know, wood discoloration, dimosis at the base of the trunk, as showing the picture here. And uh, they will kill the tree, even the, the annual crop, like chini pepper. This is the chini pepper in Pierce. And as you can see, it can be very devastating. Um, this is the uh, uh, fat after on the potato, uh, called the potato late blight. And uh, so this is one, just give you an example. This is a fat after capsaicin and, uh, you know, it can be found on chili pepper, squash, cucurbits, and beans, uh, eggplants. And so it's this one, this particular species have a very broad spectrum and melons. Um, so the important, so most of the time they cause the root rot and sometimes they will also cause the uh, crown rot. And once the plant get, you know, the, the crown tissue killed, the plant will die. And so the, the, the Phytophthora that produce this little uh, structure we call a sporangia, actually inside there's a lot, lots of this uh, those spore. They have two fragile, they can swim in. Uh, so basically if you have excessive water in, in, in the soil, they will produce this sporangia and then release this those spore and the swimming towards the root, uh, mostly in the root cap and the elongation area. They will start at you know slow down and attach start infection. You know there's a, a, a fa very fascinating uh, re, um, video clip on YouTube here. I have the link to show you how this fat after really uh, infect the plant. If you interested, you can go there to take a look. Um, a large thing I want to point out in you know, a fat after or PCM, they are a lot of true fungus. And the, the fungi, this is the evolutionary tree. Fungi is on this branch over here. The plant is on this branch here. The phytophthora actually is on branch here, very more closely to brown algae. Um, so th this is very important. That means, you know, a lot of fungicide you use to control fungi is not going to work uh, against, you know, phytophthora. So a lot of times phytophthora need, uh, you know, uh, a totally, uh, you know, a new mode of action in order for that chemical to be able to work. Um, so, I, I, so here's a, a list of some of this, uh, you know, um, the general strategy to control fat alpha diseases. Um, so, as a, you know, the fat alpha in the soil. So make sure, you know, the first thing you can do is, you know, trying to select a field with no history of fat alpha diseases, and uh, um, you know, you want to select also a set probably with a, you know, a good drain, well drained soil. And if a poor drain, let's increase the risk. And uh, also, uh, you know, use the plant pathogen free seed and the transplant uh, to avoid introducing the pathogen to your field. And if you really 
detect the, the disease plant early, just a few plants, you can just uh, should remove and destroy this plant. And uh, there's a lot of things you can do. I mean, to reduce uh, the risk of the, um, you know, um, a spread of this pathogen in your field. Um, of course, if you have, you know, resistant cultivar, if available, you should plant the resistant cultivar. And the, the last resort is the chemical treatment. Um, and uh, so I this publication here, AZ1773, outline all of this um, management you know, strategies available to you. And uh, you can get more details on this if you uh, download this uh, extension publication. So the last group of the uh, uh, disease is caused by bacteria, you know, bacterial diseases. So bacteria are single-celled uh, microorganism. It's very tiny, and uh, they, you know, they, they are very tiny. Even, you know, a healthy topsoil contains a, a tons of cell, and uh, there's a, around fifteen thousand species are being identified. You know, most of bacteria are uh, saprophytic. Some of them actually are beneficial, like rhizobium, you know, the cyanobacteria. bacteria. This bacteria can, you know, do the photosynthesis. So only about 200 species are plant pathogenic. Um, most of them, they looks like, you know, they, they, they perceive um, the form, rod shaped, and they, they, most of the plant pathogenic bacteria are aerobic, uh, which means they require the oxygen. And there's a couple of the, uh, uh, bacteria can cause a lot of diseases called fastidious diseases, like you know Zellella. Um, so Zellella actually is uh, one of the very important pathogen on lots of problems, like on grape one. They can infect the olive tree, um, you know, on pecan tree, and a lot of also ornamentals. This can be a very important pathogen, actually Zellella fastidiosa, and we also have phytoplasma. Or spiroplasma, those are, uh, you know, those are bacteria transmitted by their, you know, insect vector, and then normally they cannot survive outside of their, you know, either the vector or the plant. Phytoplasma also pretty common, and uh, they cause a, a variety of symptoms. Uh, for the most common one is witch sperm. Um, yeah, so the bacteria, they, they, normally you have, you know, leaf, leaf spot, leaf blood, canker, wilt, you know. All of this uh, that can be very. Why we actually need to diagnostic the bacteria is uh, if you like a um, tomato. Uh, if you have you know a bacterial wilt, if you know you can cut the plant, put it in a in a beaker with water. You can see a stream of bacteria actually come out. You know into the soil. There's a tons of bacteria cell. Um, I said that's one way to diagnose the bacterial diseases. So those are the general symptoms caused by the bacteria. As you can see, you know, it's a leaf spot or, or, or leaf scorch. Uh, they can cause canker on the fruit. Uh, the wrist, you know, canker is like a wrist lesion. Also, they can cause canker on the branch. They can cause the vascular wilt. The crown gall, those are the agrobacterium. This is on the grape one. Um, so one of the most common, just give you an example, you know, the, the most common disease is the bacterial leaf spot on either uh, pepper, chili pepper or bell pepper or on, on tomato. It's caused by xanthomolus. It's very important actually uh, economically. And uh, uh, the most, uh, um, uh, the best way to manage is this kind of treatment actually is the copper spray, you know, copper fungicide spray. And the, of course, there are also some, um, um, you know, if you keep spray that, the bacteria will develop a resistance to it. And uh, um, in general, for bacterial diseases, you know, you again, you, you have to control to use the integrated disease management strategies. So the first always, you know, start with clean seeds. And if there's a, a resistant variety available, plant ones, this picture show you on the left is the a susceptible cultivar on the right is the resistant one. Do you, you can see how big difference they are, and uh, so you need to you know um, don't work in the wet field, uh, don't overuse the nitrogen, do rotation, um, all of this, and uh, um, 
So don't rely on one of this method. You know, just you have to uh, try to, uh, um, uh, you know, use an integrated approach. So the next one I want to introduce to you is the nematodes. Um, so nematode is a, you know, is a non-segment the run worm like you see here, and. Uh, so it's very abundant. Most of them are, they just feeding on the bacteria or algae, uh, bacteria in the soil. And 90% uh, of them are the, you know, the microbial feeder. And uh, some of them that can become very large, like, you know, the longest one is 26 feet in blue whale. And uh, um, so they have, uh, for plant pathogenic nematode, they have this uh, specialized structure we call the stalet. And they use this to, you know, penetrate the plant cuticle so they can withdraw the nutrient in plant cell. Uh, um, so the nematode we have, you know, most of them attack roots. Sometimes they, there are a few species can also attack the stem and the leaf. And so you have root knot nematode, sting nematode, stubby nematode. There's, you know, uh, depends on where they feed, uh, how they feed. Um, so most of symptoms you will see uh, from nematode is stunting, yellowing. It's like a nutritional deficiency. And sometimes uh, it's very hard to, to, to uh, determine because sometimes if you go out to the field, if you see a stung in the area, you may attribute that to the you know, fertilizer issue or soil compact issue. So in general, the, you know, it's hard to, it's hard to uh, diagnose the, the disease caused by the nematodes. And um, um, so here, just show you a couple of, this is the root nut nematode, and this is the niche nematode, a sweet potato. And this is uh, um, a soybean, the insist nematode. So um, I want to give you an example of this running form nematode. And actually, I don't know how much uh, sweet potato uh, sweet uh, potato production in the state. Actually, uh, sweet potato uh, is susceptible to to a couple major nematode uh, issue. The the most important one are, are reniform and the and the root nodes. Here, just show you uh, the picture of the reniform nematode. Um, resistant versus susceptible. And on the left is the susceptible. But you can see a lot of yellow in stunting. On the um, uh, you know, see, this is a control um, tuber. This is the uh, uh, reniform uh, infection, as you see, it's much smaller. And this is actually how this uh, uh, reniform nematode looks. Um, so, so this is a uh, root knot nematode on sweet potato. Uh, as you can see, if it's infected, you will see a lot of this pimple like and also a lot of crack uh, on the uh, sweet potato. In the early stage, you will see some um, swelling, galling on the roots. And this is the nematode um, female. Um, and uh, sometimes if you are, uh, you know, under the pimple, you cut through, you will see this female actually feeding on the, uh, on the potato. Um, so for the nematode, Alex, yes. Maybe let's have about five more minutes. We have a few questions in the chat box. Um, and then we would like to take you know, like uh, around a 10 minute break before we go into our next presentation. Okay, yes, okay, I will uh, finish that. Okay, okay thank you. Thank you for that. Uh, so for, in terms of nematode, I think it's very important to do the, 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 the sampling. Uh, so you, you, you got to pull a sample check, you know, what, what kind of nematode species are present in your field and what's the population level from there, you can design, you know, a, a management strategy and um, Again, we need to use the integrated management strategy and they need to do rotation, sanitation, and then use the resistant one. For, for the nematode, rotation are really important. You want to rotate to a, a non-host crop. And, uh, and the last resort is you know, the chemical treatment. We, they do have some uh, you know, uh, the medicine or fumigant available on the market for for you to use. Even right now on the market, there's some um, biological nematicide, you know, available um, for you to use. So for the viral diseases, um, um, so again, you know, virus is very tiny and uh, it, it, it's very, some of the symptoms caused by viral are very unique, mosaic or witch's broom. Um, so it's, it's, it, it, 
So right now, I want to say um, that in in our state, two virus diseases can you know are emerging. One is this you know this tomato spotted wet virus, and a lot of strain of this is called the impatient necrotic spot virus. It's can infect lettuce, cause a lot of necrosis. And also the kernel top virus in the state can be very important, can affect a number of vegetable crops, also the cannabis. And the onion, you can have this iris yellow spot virus. This is a very important in the state. So the, the, the virus was uh, transmitted by you know, their vectors. Uh, so in this case, tomato spotted, spotted the weird virus transmitted by syrup. It's very important to know, you know uh, this, uh, cycle, this cycle. And uh, so in terms of management, again, you know, uh, for every disease, it's very hard to control. You, you don't have many options, but you know, you try to use the integrated you know, uh, uh, approach to manage it. And uh, so this is kind of, you know, what is the uh, integrated management? strategy, you know, um, it's like, it's approach based on prevention, cultural and sanitation, you know, physical, mechanical, the last resort is biological and chemical, you know. So you, you want to um, focus, you know, try to do everything you can to, uh, to reduce the risk using the cultural, sanitation and prevention, you know. Um, there's a lot of things you can do actually. Um, so this is the resource available. Um, I would recommend, you know, for some of those vegetable fruit diseases, diseases this compendium of this vegetable diseases from American Phytopathological Society are very useful. And uh, uh, there's a couple of books also available in terms of, you know, how to manage the disease organically. Um, you know, like this one from Cornell is, uh, is free. And this one, it, you, can, you, you can buy it through Amazon. Um, they have, very comprehensive coverage on the you know the principle, other than the you know the organic, and also at the university you know we have extension um, uh, publication many available and you can go here this link you can uh, download some of those publication. So I I have a diagnostic lab here on campus and this is my contact information. Uh, actually, some of those diseases if you cannot identify it you can submit a, a sample uh, this to my lab. We will be able to help you determine. This is the submission form. This is where you, if you Google AZPDN, um, you will be able to go there to find uh, most of the diagnostic lab at U of A um, uh, to, to, to fill out the submission form. And then, you know, they will, so they will have detailed instruction on how to collect sample and, um, so, okay, Taylor, I guess this is my last slide. Now, um, I have a question to take some questions. I have some time to take some questions. <laughs>